Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Camille Trent. It's Saturday, we're going to play in our sketchbook and we're going to be using gouache today. And I'm going to go over how... Okay, for this fun little project I have a Moleskine wet media sketchbook. Um, I think it's like a 5 by 8 or something like that. Um, all my gouache here, I go over them as I use them my palette. It's kind of big so you can't really see the whole palette in here so I'll just talk about the colors as I go use them. My water jars are up here and my brush. I have my Princeton Long 8 Round. I might use another couple of brushes. I'm going to try and stick to one brush. So I have a ton of colors you see here. Um, the Holbein gouache is my favorite. It's what I've used for 20 something years. The colors are intense. And what's different, what makes gouache so unique and different is that it's opaque. Unlike watercolor, in you know, the lighter colors, you have to kind of um, stay, you, ha you can't put lighter colors on top of darker colors, but gouache is kind of similar to acrylic, um, where you can put light colors on top of dark colors, with the exception that acrylic is permanent. It, wa it stays, it's plastic, and gouache is not. Gouache is water-based, so you can, you know, if this paint right here dries up, you can you put water on it and reconstitute it and so um, that's the different they do have acrylic gouache which I have used once or twice I mean what's the point I would say to my opinion I'd rather have just used the acrylic paint but I think the probably the acrylic gouache makes it kind of like acrylic paint but more matte no shiny surface if that's what maybe that's the difference of it but um, the gouache itself is water based so you can kind of use it like watercolor um, it has a it's more versatile, so it can be used when you water it down, more like watercolor. And when it's thick with just a little bit of water, it's really opaque, which is a lot of fun. So you can get these nice flat colors, and it's just it's just fun to play with. Uh, but this tutorial, you can do with watercolor just as easy. You know, you're just gonna have to. You just can't paint like lighter colors on top of it. You would have to do it the opposite way. Um, you'd paint the lighter colors and then put the dark ones around it. So I just sketched these simple little buildings with just rectangles and put little um, fireplaces on top. See the little rooftops here and doorways. Like it looks like a little urban city block. Um, maybe a striped awning here and some trees. Pretty straightforward. I mean, you're just kind of fun doodling different types of... Um, buildings, you know, all different shapes and sizes. And we're going to make them really colorful. This is something to do with your sketchbook if you're bored. You know, I have like all these colors here, like orange and yellow. This yellow is a, oh, this is a crazy name. <laughs> I've never used this one before. It's a lemon yellow, but it's imidazolone, imidazolone. Fancy name. Why can't I just call it yellow? I do have a lemon yellow too. That's much easier to say. And then I have a primary yellow here but any kind of yellow. So the primary yellow is a little deeper. This this and Dazzalone yellow is like really neonish. And take the yellow. Yeah, it's like a very neon yellow. And then the the primary yellow is just a typical yellow. And I have a little br brilliant orange and I'll add a little of that to that just to tone it down. I want to keep it bright, but <laughs> not that bright. And I could grab a little green or a little blue to tone it down even more but play around with the colors in the building I have this great blue it's called Verdier blue it's right here and I'm going to use that I love it there was a little yellow on my brush so I toned it down just a bit but it's a nice bright almost like periwinkle type blue just going to go in here and paint in our building Got some of this yellow paint off my brush. And because this paint is less water, you know, water-based, I mean, it's water-based, but I'm saying less, you're not going to use as much water as a watercolor, the sketchbook will work well. Um, it, it will might buckle a little bit, but it's not going to buckle as much as it would if it was complete watercolor. So we're just going to fill in some of these buildings with the colors gonna have fun with this. So I'm gonna leave the windows. I don't necessarily need to leave the windows white. I'm just leaving them white to indicate where they are. 
Or if I didn't want to do that, I can just go right over it. Because I can, because it's gouache. I don't have to leave, see if you are doing watercolor, you're going to have to leave the spaces and then go and fill in your color with gouache. You do not have to do that. You're just going to have to just fill it in whatever color you want and go right on top of it. So we're going to have fun with different color buildings. I do a blue one, you know, maybe another like a brown. I have a brown here, bluish brown, or like a pretty, you could do a pretty orange next to it. I have this bright orange. Take some of that yellow. I gotta tone it down because it's just a little too much. Green, and then I can grab some white if I wanted to. Tone it down. Play around with it. Do I want an orange building? That's the question, you know? I think about the colors to do them. And I also have this magenta up here, which is a pretty color. So maybe a blush would be nice. So magenta with the orange, and I'll add some white. It's a coral color. That's even prettier. That's what I'm going to put there. Coral. Magenta, some orange, some white. It's a pretty coral color. Next to blue. Now yellow, I mean orange and blue are opposite colors. So they complement each other, meaning that they really pop each other out. When painted next to each other, you really don't have to worry about the bleed with gouache too, unlike watercolor. It's more forgiving. There's no bleeding of the paint because it's just thick like acrylic in a way with the opaqueness. I think I'll do a green one here. So I have this ice blue turquoise. It's really fun. And I can add this, what is this green? Leaf green. It's very bright. Like I said, play around with all the colors. Whatever colors you have, don't have to follow my tutorial. It's just an idea. Get that ice blue back in here. I'm gonna grab some white. More ice blue. I want like a turquoisey green. More white. Go. I'll make it a little bit lighter. And play around with this color. I have kind of like rounded on the top these windows. This building top is a rounded top. Just gonna have some fun with this. Just filling in your rectangles loosely. And the roofs can be a different color. This one is going to have an awning, so I want to. It could be a black and white awning, it could be a navy and white awning. Um, I might do like a navy, and I actually have. I could find it. A navy blue gouache. So I don't have to make it if I don't want to. It's more of a bright navy, though. And go in here, put in the stripe awning. I have a tree sketched out here, just a little bubbly tree here. See? Stripe, and then you just do these little scallops on the end. I think of this, uh, as I'm painting it, how the city, you know, it's really hot this weekend. 
in this in the U.S. and especially where I am right now, in Massachusetts. It's hot. If you get that Billy Idol song in the '80s when he sings "Hot in the City." <laughs> so I don't think I'll keep the building the same color. It might look weird. Um, I'll change that up. I'm gonna do a. We could do like a pinkish color. Why not? I got this magenta. I'm put the white in there. Grab a little of the green, or the ice blue. Tone it down a little bit. Or that little orange. Just gonna lighten that up. Make it more blush color. Mixing all these paints. It's fun to mix all these paints. So here's the color. Way over here. This this palette is really big. So the pink and the blue are nice colors to each other. Just filling in the building. Like I'm gonna go back in when it dries and add details. All the little details that make it unique. Now it can go right up against the um, the blue, no problem. But sometimes you might want to leave a little white next to it. It's kind of like a nice touch. I used to do a lot of paintings where there's like a white line in between all the elements. And that's just a stylized way to paint. There's another building hiding back here. I might do in a yellowish color. Kind of like a rainbow. So I got that yellow. Grab some white. It's still too bright in my opinion. Tone it down a little more with the white. And we can put a little yellow one back here. Just flushing in these buildings. Like I said, you can just go right back over these colors and paint right over them because it's squash. Now here I have the yellow. I can add in like a yellow over here for some of the building details for the roof. Let's get some brown. A little magenta. A little green. Brown. Or I could have made it a brighter color if I wanted to. Didn't have to make it brown. I got the tree. Little tree trunk. Like I said, we didn't have to make that brown. We could have had more fun and added some bright colors, like this blue color I could put here. It got a little muddy because I had some other colors on my brush, but that's okay. I can do the corally color roof over here. So what I'm going to do is just fill in all these colors in the areas. You don't need to see every single detail of that. I'm just going to go in and fill in areas with the colors and then come back in and show you how we do details. Meanwhile, before that, I'm going to do a couple of trees. I have that leaf green that's really bright. Now I can add some of this, this bushy tree here. And over here. A little bush down here. One peeking through here. A little 
dark one in the background here peeking through add some darker color in this now some little bushes down in here and over in here I'm gonna have fun with this so I'm going to speed up I'm gonna stop here and speed paint through speed it up and then we'll go into the detail Okay, so now that I've painted in most of the stuff here, I'm going to show you a little the detail. I've got the black here. It's up here in the corner. It's just black. And I'm using the tip of my brush. And we're going to put in some fun details. Basically, outlining. Just put a little bit of water so it gets a little loose. Oh, it's not cooperating. There you go. You're going to outline. Like the windows, I'm going to put some details in with the buildings. <clears throat> so I can put like a line here and some lines going to this one. Kind of fun, right? And you could outline the windows or fill it in if you want to fill it in black. You could do that. The doorways. The little knobs. The buildings can have little details like this. You can outline the bushes, but just outline some of the the awning, the windows. You can put in the window panes. So I'm just outlining these ones. Put in the window panes. And this is a fun, like, just add a detail. Don't have to be perfect and precise when you're painting this. I said details in the building you can add some more scallop details again with the window this window was blocked out so we can black it in and we can add white to it if you want to do that I'll show you that right now I'll black that in And this one already has the dark color, so we can just show you how to add the white in. For the roof, again, I can add some more detail. A little scallop edge. This roof, you could scallop the edge this way. And then go in between it. It has one of those old-fashioned scalloped roofs. We're just gonna fun, you know. You can put a little window in here in the doorway. Add all these little details with the black. In the window. So that one doesn't have white, and I can't take the paint. I can just add that in. I will show you. doorway add some details down by the street area and we're gonna do something fun on top of that I'm not gonna well you could I'll just go like this and just outline some of the greenery on the trees if you want to do that so I'm gonna clean up my brush and I'll grab the white get it really clean because I still have a lot of black on it <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is very cracking today. Zoom in. So I have some white gouache. Let me just grab it over here. I'll fill in that window. We can go back over that with the black. But the other ones, we can put the white outline 
See how gouache goes right over the dark. What you can't do with watercolor. Which is a fun thing about gouache. Can't add that. So with the white, you can add like these little highlights. Right, the highlights of the building, just little touches. You could do the white scallop here. There you go. Do the white, and I can go back over this one and put black in. Just add some white. Highlights. See, it's fun to play with the gouache. <laughs> and then with the trees, like it's you know like acrylic paint. I would I would highlight. I would take some lighter green and go in here and go right on top, just pushing the paint around like this, just making those bushes have some life to them. See, and a little green here, just in that one side. The lights come in this way. We could go into the front of these. Let me grab some more paint. Of the buildings and add flowers. Just put some flowers right in here. Right in the front. See, I'm just dabbing in like just petals and bright colors. Grab that yellow. So my yellow turned to brown. <laughs> you can grab white and do white daisies, yellow, orange. Play around with putting lots of color. Put like a sunflower type flower here. See how you just paint right on top of that paint? That's the beauty of gouache. You want to have fun. And go and add some leaves, stems. So I'm going to probably go in here and add a bunch of flowers. Various colors. Do some blue ones. Just pushing the brush around. You see how I'm just going like one, two, three, four, five with these little petals. Kind of looks like a cornflower. I don't have purple, but I could mix this blue with the magenta and make a purple. See? And add a little white. I've got my purple. Add a bunch of little flowers back here. We're just pushing paint around. Cleaning off my brush many times here. My paper towel, look at that. <laughs> it's, it's destroyed. It has a lot of fun. You can add the yellow right into the center of the pink. It's a little loose, wet, so it's going to blend in a little bit. You can just go back on top of that when that dries. That is the fun of the gouache. I have some white. Oops, that's really wet. Sorry. And add some white daisies. Just peeking through. So you basically you're in a field of wildflowers looking at the urban street. You know, you go in and add a whole bunch of greenery. Different color greens. Some dark ones in here. Some leaves. And just move this brush around. But this is just a fun little exercise. To do with your sketchbook on a Saturday. I see. I'll go back into this uh, window that I didn't finish and put in the black. 
in the detail. And go back in all these other areas too. You can put in white, you could put in the black for, like I said, sunflower, go right on top of that. Have fun with it. So I hope you guys enjoy this little uh, tutorial about gouache. I mean, um, I'll go back in. This, so you can keep going, adding more colors on top. I like the blue a little brighter. That's what's so great about it. You can just keep going in, adding little colors. It's a lot of fun to use. You should try it. Um, if you don't, you might want to try some inexpensive gouache to see if you like it. The whole bind is my favorite. The colors are so vibrant and fun. So, you know, play around with it. It's just something that's different to do. And like I said, you don't have to do gouache. You could do this in watercolor. It's just an idea. Obviously, you have to paint the buildings a little lighter and then add the dark colors on top. So, there you go, guys. A little Saturday sketchbook tutorial. I'll just keep adding. And the finished one will be up with the uh, picture. Take care, guys. I hope you have a great weekend. And don't forget to check out my Patreon. I have uh, new exclusive videos there every week. Um, this week was a seascape with a lighthouse. So check it out. And it comes with sketches to go by. And I also gave you the sketch for the coneflower on there, too. I mean, excuse me. Yes, the coneflower, the Ignatia, that I did on Floral Friday. Okay, guys. Take care. I'll speak to you soon.